This is question number eight of TN Ready Math Practice Test for Grade 5. The question says the line plot shows the distance in miles that Jenny walked on five different days. So these, each one of these little X's identify a length or a distance that Jenny walked. So good for her, working on her fitness, or maybe she just had to walk that far. I don't know Jenny's life, just saying. How many total miles did Jenny walk? Enter your answer in the space provided. When I do total, that's an equal word, so I'm going to do something that equals it. So I have to think, okay, she did this this day, this this day, this this day, this this day, this this day. And I don't know what order they came in, it doesn't actually matter. But what does matter is that these links are not the same. So multiplication is adding things that are the same multiple times. So I'm not going to multiply here. Instead, I'm going to make a little chart for myself. And it's not going to look great, but I should say my regular handwriting is not wonderful, but it's much better than it is where I, on this than when I use this writing tablet, but that's neither here nor there. So we'll just go in order. So the first day she did two-fourths, even though probably not. The next day she did three-fourths. The next day she did three-fourths again. Then, spoiler alert, three-fourths again. And then finally she did one mile. So I'm going to convert that into um, fourths, because why wouldn't I? Since all of these are in fourths, I know that four fourths would be one. So if I had this and start to shade, if I shade all four of them, the whole thing is shaded. And it kind of looks like kind of a sad grimace, whatever, from McDonald's. Four out of four. Now, to do a total, I'm just going to combine those together. You combine things like this with adding. The nice thing is, since I have a common denominator, my final answer should have it in it, unless it comes out even, and we'll find that out in a minute. So, 2 plus 3 is 5, and I'm just going to make little notes to myself, so in case I get lost somewhere, I can come back. Plus 3 more is 8, plus 3 more is 11, plus 3 more is 15. So, 15 fourths. Now, you may notice that I tend to do a reasonable amount of writing when I do these. Uh, like writing these little numbers here, this 11, this 8, this 5 scenario. And I write out this um, little chart. Why bother, right? Well, the reason that I do it, number one, is because I'm trying to explain the concept. But really, it's for me. I have attention issues that I deal with. And one of my biggest problems in school is that I would get into the middle of a problem and then lose focus for a minute and have trouble coming back to where I started. So I'd have to start all over. It was very frustrating, and I didn't like it. So I learned over time that the more I drew things out, number one, it's sort of a mini brain break. I don't have to constantly be thinking about numbers. I can think about, OK, draw a picture. And oh, look how goofy that looks. And it gets me out of the moment in a nice way, and then a, but I'm still in it. Um, it makes it less scary, I guess. And then number two, when I zone out or go off on little tangents like this, I can come back and say, where was I when I get to here? I'm like, oh, I have Z11, so I need to add four. That's much easier for me to come back from zoning out than something happens across the room, and then I lose it and have to start all the way over. I hated that part, so I started doing this. Now, we have this setup here so it's an improper fraction it doesn't actually say that I have to change it in any way so I could answer this question as an improper fraction to say 15 fourths the question itself does not require a specific style if it said you know answer as a mixed number then I would need to put in a mixed number but it doesn't so you're allowed to make those types of adjustments we'll, we'll convert it into a mixed number but you know, whatever. So for 15 fourths, you could say like 4 times 3 is 12, but you may need to do 4, 8, 12, 16, because those are the multiples of 4. That's all I'm doing here. Nothing too complicated. Well, I'm going well here. I'm going well here. I can't make it here, so that goes out. So I say, okay, well, I only got to 15. So 15 minus 12 is 3, so that's what goes. So it is 1, 2, 3, sorry, you start at 0, 1, 2, 3, sheesh, and 3, 4. 
So there it is. Do you have to draw this out? Absolutely not. If you know that 4 times 3 is 12, do that and then think, okay, we'll count up from 12, 13, 14, 15. That's what goes here. Uh, that's probably what I would have done, to be honest, but I'm just trying to make a visual story here because that's the medium that we're in. But what I would have done originally is I would have said, okay, well, 3 times 4 is 12, and then I would think, well, or 4 times 3 is 12. So I would have gone ahead and written this 3 there, and then I would have said, okay, 12, and then it gets me to 13, 14, 15. So those three together I would put there and put the denominator. So 15 fourths, 3 fourths, whatever, choose your own adventure as far as that's concerned. But those are some different methods that you can use to get it. But when you're asked for a total, uh, make sure that you have some chart, hopefully, that you can work with because it'll make everything easier. And if you get spaced out for a minute, you can still come back and recover. And that's a big deal in these types of tests.